Kekrops, Piper said. You're planning to betray us as soon as you step through that goo. Yes, he agreed. I will alert the giants. They will destroy you, he hissed. Why did I tell you that? Listen to the heartbeat of Gaia, Piper urged. You can sense her rage, can't you? Kekrops wavered. The end of his staff glowed dimly. I can, yes, she is angry. She'll destroy everything, Piper said. She'll reduce the Acropolis to a smoking crater. Athens, your city will be utterly destroyed, your people along with it. You believe me, don't you? I d d do. Whatever hatred you have for humans, for demigods, for Athena, we are the only chance to stop Gaia. So you will not betray us. For your own sake and your people, you will scout the territory and make sure the way is clear. You will say nothing to the giants. Then you will return. That is what I'll do. Kakrops disappeared through the membrane of goo. Annabeth shook her head in amazement. Piper, that was incredible! We'll see if it works. Piper sat down on the cool stone floor. She figured she might as well rest while she could. The others squatted next to her. Percy handed her a canteen of water. Until she took a drink, Piper hadn't realized how dry her throat was. Thanks, Percy nodded. You think the charm will last? I'm not sure, she admitted. If Capcrops comes back in two minutes with an army of giants, then no. The heartbeat of Gaia echoed through the floor. Strangely, it made Piper think of the sea, how the waves boomed along the cliffs of Santa Monica back home. She wondered what her father was doing right now. It would be the middle of the night in California. Maybe he was asleep or doing a late night TV interview. Piper hoped he was in his favorite spot on the porch in the living room, watching the moon over the Pacific, enjoying some quiet time. Piper wanted to think he was happy and content right now, in case they failed. She thought about her friends in the Aphrodite cabin at Camp Half-Blood. She thought about her cousins in Oklahoma, which was odd since she never spent much time with them. She didn't even know them very well. Now she was sorry about that. She wished she'd taken more advantage of her life, appreciated things more. She would always be grateful for her family aboard the Argo, too. But she had so many other friends and relatives she wished she could see one last time. Do you guys ever think about your families? she asked. It was a silly question, especially on the cusp of a battle. Piper should have been focused on their quest, not distracting her friends. But they didn't chide her. Percy's gaze became unfocused. His lower lip quivered. My mom, I... I I haven't seen her since Hera made me disappear. I called her from Alaska. I gave Coach Hedge some letters to deliver to her. I... His voice broke. She's all I've got. Her and my stepdad, Paul. And Tyson, Annabeth reminded him. And Grover, and... Yeah, of course, Percy said. Thanks, I feel much better. Piper probably shouldn't have laughed, but she was so full of nervousness and melancholy, she couldn't hold it in. What about you, Annabeth? My dad. My stepmom and stepbrothers. She turned the dragon bone blade in her lap. After all I've been through in the past year, it seems stupid that I resented them for so long. And my dad's relatives. I haven't thought about them in years. I have an uncle and cousin in Boston. Percy looked shocked. You with a Yankees cap? You got family in Red Sox country? Annabeth smiled weakly. I never see them. My dad and my uncle don't get along. Some old rivalry. I don't know. It's stupid what keeps people apart. Percy nodded. She wished that she had the healing powers of Asclepius. She wished she could look at people and see what was hurting them, then whip out with her prescription pad and make everything better. But she guessed there was a reason Zeus kept Asclepius locked away in his un underground temple. Some pain should not be washed away so easily. It had to be dealt with, even embraced.